G'day folks, Corey Hunt here. I hope you're really well. There I am. I won't be here for long because I want to uh, get myself out of the way so we can focus on the stuff we're going to work through in this course. So this course is a bit of a collection of classes to teach you some stuff to help you understand Google a bit better so that your website and your stuff can rank higher to appeal to the right people. So in fact, I might just move myself out of the way really quickly. The rest of the class, well, the series of classes will essentially be me talking through things you need to do. Now, once you've done each class or video, so you've worked through the curriculum, I want you to do the stuff. And if you need to, you can reach out and ask questions either in the comments on this video or in the Facebook group. So the Facebook group is Digital Marketing for Rookies. You can ask questions in there about these specific actions, but also in the comments below because these videos will be hosted on YouTube. These videos aren't for the YouTube algorithm. They're for the people doing the course. It's just a handy place to host them. And if extra people see it, that's all good because most of this stuff is stuff you might've heard before, stuff that's out there, but it's structured in a way that you can work through all of this stuff over the course of a day or two and get some results for your business. And that's really what it's all about is small actions with big results. Now, the first thing is to think about is this course is called Get On Top Of Google Search. I'm trying to use that phrase Google Search more and more rather than just Google because I think it's really important. People forget that Google is a search engine. So people go there to search for an answer or find a solution or figure something out. They're not just cruising around looking for stuff to fill time. They're going to Google for a specific reason. Now, really, when websites first started, it was kind of like, a, I guess, an online brochure about your business. Uh, and people would literally get the brochures ahead about their business and they would copy that. And that was their website which was fine at the start of the internet way back when. But now what we're trying to do is outplay our opposition to find the people and get them to come to us, not the other people. So the big idea of this course is, is this line here. We want to get you ranking higher on Google for the right stuff to attract the right people. So think that through. People go to Google they search for a word or a phrase and we want them to find us but not only that we want these to be the people that are perfect for our business so you've really got to think about google and your website from the customer's perspective not from your perspective which is an absolute marketing cliche but for this course it's really useful because i see lots of websites where people talk about their their background, their training, their history. However, they fail to talk about the problems they can solve for people or they, they don't show social proof and testimonials about people they've helped or people using the product. So we have to think about it from why is somebody on Google in the first place? Now for this first video, we've got six things I thought we had six. We have five things to do. Okay, five. So thing number one, and what I want you to do is to actually write these down or record them somewhere. And you can put these in the Facebook group. You can pop them in the comments below as a way to bet it down as to the, these are my answers. And that helps to sink into you as to what you're doing. You can share them with me if you like. But the first, this first question is fundamental. So who is your business for? Who do you serve? I want you to think about an ideal client, preferably an actual client that you have, the type of client that you would like to replicate and have more of. So think about that ideal person, because from now on, whenever you build stuff for your website, or even your social media accounts, which drive people to your website, I want you to think about that person. Does this content or this article or this video help that person? And if it does, then you're probably off to a good start so that it will appeal to Google. 
because when we get it right for our right people, then we get it right for Google. So think about that question there and write that down somewhere. Who do you actually serve in your business and describe that person so that from now on, every article, every social media post, every email, every video, whatever you do in the marketing sphere for your business is not so much about you, it's about that person. And if it serves their purposes, then it's probably going to help you out in your mission to rank higher on Google. The next thing I want you to think about, and this is not, this question is not a, a thing that will help you rank higher on Google. It is more about conversion rates. So when people find your website, we want them to do something. We want them to sign up to this email, grab this voucher, hit the contact us button. What is that thing? Because as we create content, let's say you've got 100 visitors to your website but only three contact you. Imagine if we could change that three into six. You could double your business in one go just by being clear about what you want them to do. So as we create content to appeal to Google, we're also going to think about what's the point of them coming to our website in the first place? Do we want them to contact us? Do we want them to join a group? Do we want them to grab this voucher? Do we want them to join our email list? Do we want them to grab our free download? Think about that. I've seen websites where the work has been done by a marketer to increase a business dramatically simply by doubling up on the calls to action, the contact us, all of those ways where people can interact with you, add in a chat icon, all that sort of stuff. So think about that too. I want you to think about that one action. Some businesses will be better off just having a one-page website with one call to action. That's what landing pages are for, and that's why landing pages are used in advertising, because they solve uh, people's search for a certain thing. The landing page is where they land, and there's only one thing they can do, which is to take that action, sign up for that thing, whatever it might be. Number three. What is your dollar statement? Now, a dollar statement essentially means people pay me X, Y, Z dollars to do this thing. I charge $100 and I do a warrant of fitness for a car. I charge $100 and I give somebody a massage. People pay me $500 and I optimize their Google business profile. People pay me $2,000 and I get them a mortgage for their home. People pay me $50,000 and I get them a brand new car. So this this is important because this is something that, again, it's more about ensuring people know what your business is about when they find your business on Google. But it's important to think about this at all times too because it's a fundamental way we build our content as well. What is your business all about? So I want you to think about that statement. And if you don't have that clear, feel free to ask me and help clarify that. Now, this next one's a biggie. What is your bullseye phrase? Now, my definition of a bullseye phrase, so in SEO, in search engine optimization, we talk about keywords and key phrases. Okay, so if you're a mortgage broker, your website will talk about mortgage, mortgage broker, mortgage advisor, property, housing market, all those things are probably all key words you would use on the website in your articles, the pages, the sub pages, all that stuff. However, we use a thing called a bullseye phrase with all of our clients because we believe and we've proven that for most businesses, there's one phrase that stands out above all the others that if you can dominate, you will increase your business dramatically. For example, you might be a personal trainer in Ponsonby. What we know is that if you build your website around personal trainer Ponsonby, you're going to grow your business because most people, yes, they might search for weight loss, muscle gain, get fit over 40, mum's fitness, all that stuff. But predominantly, the main thing they'll search for is personal trainer Ponsonby or personal trainer near me. Bullseye phrases are very important because 
once you know what that is, based on testing, and we've got another video about bullseye phrase, and we've talked about this a few times. Once you know what your bullseye phrase is, life gets a lot easier. Just think of that if there's one word or phrase you could get number one spot on Google for, what would that be? Okay, so for example, I have a client in Auckland who is an electrician. Their bullseye phrase is electrician Auckland because that's the phrase that gets by far the most search volume and is the most appropriate for their business. I have a client in Wellington who is a mortgage broker. Their bullseye phrase is mortgage broker Wellington. My bullseye phrase is SEO consultant Tauranga. So that's what I went on Google for because I've structured my website around that. Now, for someone like me, I could use lots of different phrases and words, but I know that if I focus on Google and SEO, then I, I attract the right people. Who are you trying to attract? And what are they most likely to be searching Google for? You've really got to get this right. Okay, so you could ask 20 of your friends, for example, what do you search Google for when you think of my business? Ask your best customers, when you found my business, what did you actually put into Google? And it's usually something very, very basic and obvious. I'm actually going to write that in there, basic and obvious. Well, I won't, I'll do it later. But the bullseye phrase is basic, obvious. Your family would probably think of it. Often the business owner goes a bit too complicated and complex. For example, another one, I have a customer who is a property accountant. There's a million phrases that we could focus on with SEO, but we focus on property accountant New Zealand because that's what most people look for. It's really basic, really obvious sometimes, but it's crucial because we're going to build a lot of content and pages, etc., on that or using that as our phrase. Right, I think I've talked about that one enough. So the next thing to do for this first video is what's going to be your derivative meta title? Now, the meta title is when you look on a Google search engine results page, you'll see the URL at the top, then you have the meta title, the blue bit in the middle, then you have the meta description below that. I should have put the image here, but I'll do that later. So the, the meta title is something that you can, uh, you basically use your website builder, and sometimes you'll have a plugin like Yoast or Rank Math, and it'll ask you for each page, what is your meta title or your title tag? What is that? And then they'll also um, ask you about meta descriptions for each page. But the meta title is a very, very important bit of information because Google looks at that and puts a lot of weighting on that when they're looking at who do we rank up the top. Okay. So, for example, um, now these two can often be the same. Okay, so for example, the mortgage broker in Wellington, his bullseye phrase is mortgage broker Wellington, and his main page, so his main website, the meta title for that, that page is mortgage broker Wellington. It's the same thing. Now, this line's important. The, the next, the other titles on the site will link to that as well. So you might have, um, if we look at this one here, for example, Personal trainer Ponsonby. Let's say I was setting up shop as a personal trainer in central Auckland. Corey Hind, personal trainer Ponsonby. Now, my business might be called Corey Hind Training, but my bullseye phrase would be personal trainer Ponsonby. Why not Auckland? Well, it's probably too big, too much competition. But if I went personal trainer Ponsonby, I could probably aim to win that category and get a really good business based on people searching for personal trainer Ponsonby. Now, all of the other pages on my website and the meta titles for those pages and the URLs, so the URL might, the next page down might be um, Corey Hine Training backslash men's fitness. Now, the URL for that might be that, men's fitness, but the meta title for that might be personal trainer men's fitness. So 
it relates to the one above that. So it's like a sliding scale, like a cascade down. And so we call those silos. So you've got your main category up the top, the main page, what your website's all about. And that's what your bullseye phrase and meta title talk about and relate back to Google. So there, that meta title is what Google looks at to link your website back to what people are actually searching for. The next page down should relate to that as well. Because if it's totally out the gate different, if I had a personal trainer, gym plus a cafe together, and I'm trying to talk about both of those businesses at the same time, it gets a little bit confusing to Google and it's actually hard. But if I stick all of my information in there about fitness, weight loss, muscle gain, all related to personal trainer Ponsonby, then Google starts to get it. Okay, so this section here, the bullseye phrase and the meta title, really is all about making sure Google knows what your website is all about. Okay, and really that's it. So once you've thought about who your clients are, okay, think about your ideal client, think about what you want them to do on your website, think about, you know, your dollar statement, people pay you money to do what, but then really the main goal with this video, because we're going to use this bullseye phrase and this this major meta, meta title, we're going to use them again and again and again, okay? It goes as far as even the images on your website, when you have an alt tag, you might say, um, man doing weights, line, personal trainer Ponsonby. So that bullseye phrase and that meta title will get used again and again and again. So that's it for this video. Work through those five questions. The bullseye phrase, this is a must. You must have this bullseye phrase in place to continue in this course. Please ask me what yours might be if you don't really know what it should be. Pop it in the comments below and say, hey, Corey, my business is blah, 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 blah. And I'll look at it like, you know, a, a basic human and go, okay, what would I look for on Google if I was looking for this business? That's what your bullseye phrase is. Uh, your derivative meta title, you know, it could be the same as the bullseye phrase. You might want to look at some of your competition and see what they are using for their meta title. Just chuck into Google, how do I find a meta title? And you'll find tools that can help you look at other people's meta titles. But when you see your Google search results page, the meta title is obvious. It's in the middle. It's blue. It's big. You can't really miss it. So we want you to have your bullseye phrase sorted out ASAP, please. And also that derivative meta title and then the content, etc. later on down the line will link back to the stuff and the pages and content you create will all tie in together because Google's like a great big spider web, okay? And in the middle of the spider web is your business and your meta title and your bullseye phrase. And then all the other stuff links together to tell Google, ah, this is the best search result for that thing, okay? Probably the best way to describe it is like a big spider web. All right, guys, any questions regarding any of that stuff? Just pop them in the comments below and I'll get onto it. And then we'll get into the next video pretty quick as well. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.